Hello everybody, Dimple here again welcoming you all back to my next session on Android Framework Components. In my previous session, I tried my level best to explain the concept of AIDL in a simple way so that everyone could understand. We saw what is AIDL, how to write a sample AIDL, what are the important files which will be generated along with an example. Today's session, I'll be dealing with the topic of how to convert an existing HAL from HIDL to AIDL. So we all know that Google has given us um, leniency uh, to convert the HIDL to AIDL. So the main reason being we use AIDL in the upper layers, that is in the framework layers and the application layers. Uh, Google thought that if one um, method is common. For example, AIDL is common throughout the entire uh, Android architecture. It would be easy for developers. Being that as the main uh, intention, Google has given us an opportunity to uh, convert from AIDL to HIDL. If we do not um, want to write our own HIDL files, we can feel free to use AIDL. Okay, so Google has given this uh, leniency, but it's not mandatory. So today we will be seeing how to convert existing HAL from HIDL to AIDL file. Uh, so um, in every slide, I'll be showing you all each step. The first one is we have to use this HIDL to AIDL tool to convert HIDL interface to AIDL. So Google has provided us this tool. This tool where we can find, we can find in our Android build tree. So if you have A11 Android source code, you can find this HIDL to AIDL. Uh, the location I will show you all in my next slide. Using this tool, we can convert the already generated HIDL files to AIDL files. So what are the features of this tool? What exactly this does? we will see now. This tool has the following features. It will create .aidl files based on the .hal files for the given package. Okay. We know HAL files, we have to define, I mean the vendor, whoever is designing the hardware, that person has to define the HAL. So um, based on this HAL files, .aidl files are created by this tool. It will create build rules for the newly created AIDL packages with all backends enabled. Okay, There are three types of backends, that is Java, CPP and NDK Native Development Kit. So it will, uh, this tool will take the responsibility of creating new build rules and it will create translate methods in Java, CPP and NDK backends for translating from HIDL types to AIDL. Obviously, when we convert from one type of file to another type of file, there will be different methods which has to be translated. Okay, so that method has to be understood by Java, by CPP as well as the native layers. Okay, so the um, functionality or the responsibility of translating those methods is again taken by HIDL to AIDL tool. It will create build rules for translate libraries with required dependencies. It will create static asserts to ensure that HIDL and AIDL enumerators have the same value in CPP NDK backends. So basically the main functionality to put it in simple words is this tool will convert all the HIDL files to AIDL files. During this conversion, what are the uh, things to be taken care of? The translation uh, has to be understood by all the three layers, Java, C++, and native layers. So this translations, the libraries, the dependencies, converting all those things is taken care by this particular tool. So the first step is build the tool located in system tools HIDL, HIDL to AIDL. So we saw what are the features and importance of this HIDL to AIDL. Next, what we have to do, we have to build that. So this is present in system tools HIDL folder. You all can see here, you all can spot it here. HIDL to AIDL, the tool is here, right? So this tool we have to build and we know the thumb rule to build is we have to make our environment setup. Then we have to give lunch command. After lunch command, just give the 
m command which will build only this hidl to aidl so here i'm giving m space hidl to aidl okay after you give this command the build will start those things i have not captured here uh, the build will start it will take some 5 to 10 minutes next once you are done once you have completed building hidl to aidl tool you have to execute the tool with an output directory okay followed by package which has to be converted so now my tool is ready okay i have built my tool my tool is ready what i have to do i have to give my output directory and the package which i need to convert correct so that this tool will make ready the output directory so here the command we have to use is the tool that is hidl to aidl hyphen o which stands for output directory and the package which needs to be converted so example here what i have done is hidl to aidl hyphen o space android dot hardware dot nfc so this is my output directory and nfc one dot two is my package name i want to convert all the hidl files present in the nfc folder to aidl files okay so i have given this particular location next that's all once we build the hidl to aidl and once we give the output directory our job is done okay so 90% of our job will be done because the tool will take care of converting all the required and necessary files next what we have to do we have to read through the generated files and fix any issues so the conversion is completed by following these two steps building the hidl to aidl and giving the output and the package name which i want to convert the conversion will be complete next if there are any issues during this conversion which are not handled those issues will be present in this conversion.log file okay and if there are any warning suggestions which needs particular attention those things will be in the dot aidl files the newly generated dot aidl files but these things will be marked with comment okay so they are commented what we have to do we have to go through the conversion.log file and we have to go through the newly generated aidl file see what is not fixed what is not handled and we need to fix this so this conversion.log where it will be found here since i had built the nfc in android hardware in my previous uh, slide what i have to do i have to go to that location right so that location is android system tools hidl android hardware and inside hardware nfc folder so inside this folder i can see conversion.log file which is generated and i can see aidl file which is also generated infc.aidl so we can see aidl files and conversion.log file here i could not show the conversion.log file because this was empty for me which means that i did not have any issues related to this particular conversion next slide i will show you all how the dot aidl file which is newly generated looks like so we know that any suggestions or warnings which has to be taken care are put in the comment section so here we can see interface inherits from android infc but aidl does not support the interface inheritance so like this the different uh, uh, suggestions will be given ignoring some method from the interface file since a newer alternative is available all the uh, warnings it will put in this particular file okay so we are done and we need to write sc policy so aidl service type which is visible to vendor code must have this vendor service attribute so all the rules for sc policies all the rules for aidl sc policies remains the same only thing is that we have to add this vendor service tag extra attribute we have to add in our sc policies okay with other tags with other attributes we have to add this vendor service other than that everything else remains the same like how we write sc policies for our aidl files and must required tags there are few tags which we need to take care of and uh, those i have listed here so we int 
F stability that's called as vendor interface stability AIDL servers it must be declared in the vendor interface manifest okay vendor interface manifest file for example like this so um, we have to declare whatever new hardware we generate right that one we need to declare in vendor interface face manifest file see android hardware vibrator here is an example vibrator uh, aidl files are there along with the version and the fq name we need to declare and here y'all can observe hidl format is uh, sorry hal format is written as aidl so uh, just whatever new uh, hal you have written that one it will be in aidl format after performing the uh, the previous steps so just mention that in vendor interface manifest file similar to this and one more thing i wanted to tell you all here i have taken an example of uh, power.aidl uh, file so every aidl file okay which is used to convert uh, which is used to communicate with a HAL so that file has to be started with this annotation at the rate vendor interface stability v int f stability so this is very very important so this is an annotation used why this is important because uh, this will help us uh, to communicate from the native layer so this aidl files it has to be understood from the native layer all the libraries then coming framework application layer so the entire android architecture has to understand this particular aidl file for that purpose we will add this annotation okay vendor interface stability annotation so two things take care of first don't forget to add this annotation in whichever aidl file is generated and second thing is that you have to mention this particular package name in the vendor interface manifest file so uh, that was all i wanted to tell you all today about the uh, steps uh, to be taken uh, to convert from hidl to aidl files and what are the important tags and about the SE policy so with that i am done with today's topic let's move on to today's question as we come to the end of the session so the question is uh, what are the possible states in which a process is based okay what are the different states a process can have so um, the there are four different states one is foreground activity second one is visible activity third one is background activity fourth one is empty activity okay whenever there is a low memory uh, on your device when the low memory killer is triggered so uh, the uh, process which is empty will be killed first the process which are running in the background will be killed next and visible processes will be killed third and foreground processes will be the last to be killed because foreground processes are uh, the process with which the user is interacting with okay the ui is visible and user is interacting with that so that will be the last process to be killed so that was today's question uh, thanks everyone for watching i hope you all understood the steps of or at least you got an idea like how to convert the existing hidl to aidl i will see you all soon in my next session until then everyone take care bye